I have been using Capture One for years and I still think it's one of the best RAW editors out there. But every time I take landscape photos, I hit these same roadblocks. Things that Capture One still haven't fixed even after years of updates. And if you are a landscape photographer like me or sports or event photographer, those problems can actually ruin your workflow. Today I'm going to show you exactly why Lightroom still has the upper hand in these areas and why Capture One desperately needs to catch up. Hello everyone, my name is Hamid Bank. I'm a visual effect artist and a landscape photographer based in Sweden. I have been shooting landscape photos for over a decade now and I have been using Capture One for five years. I switched to Capture One from Lightroom when I switched to Fujifilm in 2020. And since then, I am a Capture One user and I love it. I'm not trying to bash Capture One here, I'm trying to help make it even better. So please help me out by sharing this video so it eventually reaches Capture One team. This piece of software is great but it's missing some crucial tools for landscape shooters and also for nature, wildlife and sports photographers. In years of update, they pushed all those tools to improve it for studio and portrait photographers. It's an amazing tool sets for that. If you are a portrait or a studio shooter, you have the best software for that kind of work. But if you shoot landscape, nature, travel, wildlife or sports, then Capture One is letting you down in some areas. And that is a lot of genres of photography. There are some flaws that really matter. The first problem is with masking. There are some masking limitations in Capture One. They have very advanced masking tools like Magic Brush and AI Object Select tools. These masks are amazing. They do a fantastic job, but there is a major flaw in masking and a little bit of a limitation when you want to combine those masks. You see, when you create a radial gradient or linear gradient mask, if you want to add something to that mask or subtract from it, Capture One will rasterize that mask. That means you cannot move them easily around anymore. These are locked in pixel levels. For instance, you want to select the sky and then remove some part of it with the linear gradient. You cannot do that. Or if you select the mountains, for instance, and then you want to intersect that mask with radial gradient, there is no way. So every time you use any of those gradient tools, you are not able to mix it with another type of mask, unless you rasterize it. It's not a deal breaker, I can live with that. And I still think the Capture One masking tools are very good. But I wish they will fix that one problem and gives us more flexibility in combining different type of masks. But the other flaws that I'm going to talk about in this video, they are more major, they are more problematic and they sometimes actually can be a deal breaker. The second problem I encountered is in panoramas. When you stitch a panorama in Capture One, you have actually some great features. You have more methods to combine and stitch those panoramas here compared to what you have in Lightroom. And you also can scale down the output image to reduce the megapixels and you won't overflow your computer resources. This is very handy. If you want to learn more about panoramas in Capture One, check out my video up in the corner. But there is one problem or one feature that is lacking in making a stitch panorama in Capture One compared to Lightroom. When I take pictures for Pano, I try to keep my tripod as level as possible and I also test the scene before I take the panorama images. I pan the camera left to right to check if it is leveled. Even that doesn't guarantee a perfect panorama. But anyway, when you stitch those images into a panorama, you will end up with gaps around the corners and sometimes the horizon is a little bit bent especially if you use a wide angle lens. In Lightroom, you have two options to fix these problems. You can warp and stretch the corners to straighten up the horizon and fill the gaps, or you can tell the software to create those pixels for you using content aware tools to regenerate those missing pixels. But in Capture One, the only option you have is to crop it afterwards, after you stitch the panorama and uh, try to rotate and balance the image. Well, if you end up with the bent horizon or warped horizon line, we cannot fix that in Capture One. You have to export it to a third party software like Photoshop and try to manually warp the image. That's not a great way to fix this problem. I wish we could do this in Capture One without going to a third party app. 
This problem is nothing compared to the next issue we have in Capture One. The third problem is with HDR Merge. It's very funny, I made two videos about these two tools and explained how you can use them in Capture One and I explained how amazing it is to use Capture One to make panoramas and HDR images. I will leave the link to that video as well in the corner. But at the same time, I knew that there is a problem with HDR merge that I didn't say in that video and this is why I'm making this video to explain that big problem and that is a lack of the ghosting tool in Capture One. For those of you who don't know what is actually ghosting issue in HDR merge, let me explain it with some examples. When you shoot landscape photos with different exposures and combine them to make HDR image, if something in the scene moves between those exposures, in the process of HDR merge, you will end up with double edges around that object. That artifact is called ghosting. In the process of the ghosting, software tries to find the best pixels and use that part only from one of the exposures. In landscape photography, 80% of the time, there is something that moves between those exposures. It could be clouds that move fast, leaves on the trees, if there is a sliver of wind, water and waves, or even birds flying across the scene. In Capture One, when you use a mesh to HDR, you will end up with nasty artifacts. These artifacts are very hard to get rid of and fix. You have to export this HDR mesh into something like Photoshop with more advanced ceiling tools and try to recreate those edges. This is a nightmare especially if you are dealing with a lot of details in the clouds, waves or leaves and small branches if you do this HDR mesh somewhere else, not in Capture One. It's a real deal breaker for me and this happens a lot unless the scene is quite still and this is not always the case. Lightroom has a degusting tool that fix that problem, fix that artifacts, so you won't see these problematic areas. You might end up with uh, some noise in those areas and maybe different noise patterns throughout the image, but that is a less of a problem than those nasty artifacts. These three problems that I mentioned are major problems you have in Capture One, but there is one more that I would like to explain here which actually affects wildlife, sports and event photographers even more. That's denoising. Nowadays, there are many ways to deal with noise. Many different applications and they all do much better job than what Capture One can do. Capture One noise reduction is pretty much useless. It's very primitive, very old and doesn't do much good to your images. I never touch the noise slider in Capture One and I leave it at its default. If I need to denoise my images, I have to export it to a third party software. I use Topaz for that. Or you can use Lightroom, Photoshop, DxO or Luminar. And all of them offer much better noise reduction system using AI. And I know that Capture One loves AI. Why not using that in denoise? This is not uh, only for landscape photographers. Wildlife photographers usually deal with the noisy images. They have to increase the shutter speed, use long lenses with narrow aperture and not to mention low light situations. Same goes for sports shooters, especially for indoor sports, event photographers and of course astrophotographers. So here are three major problems that I mentioned. The masking limitations, lack of options in making panoramas and lack of degusting to make HDR images plus room to add AI denoise. That would be fantastic. So if you agree, please share this video. Maybe the Capture One team will finally listen. And if you're considering switching, you know these limitations before you commit. But still, I would say Capture One is a fantastic editing tool and I'm gonna keep using that. I'm not going back to Lightroom anytime soon because I think Capture One has many benefits over Lightroom. If you want to see how I edit my photos in Capture One, I have a playlist of videos, you can watch it here. Thank you so much for watching this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you soon in the next video, until then, take care.